Kia ora tātou. A tēnei te mihi atu ki a koutou katoa, a kua tatu mai nei runga i te karangote rā. A tēnei te mihi, a tēnei te mihi. A me ki pēnei ko te mihi tuata i ki tō tātou nei kaihanga, a nāna nei ngā mea katoa. A ki a rātou mā te hunga mate, a rā ko Papa Wainerei, Harrison. A rātou mā ki a rātou haere, haere moi mai rā. A ka hoki mai ki a tātou te hunga ora i karapoti mai nei e aku nui, e aku rahi tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. A tēnei te mihi ki a koe e te rangatira tākuta makarena Tarli. A ko hara mai nō tāmaki makaurau, tēnei te mihi. Ko hara mai ki wainga i a mātou ki te kōrero e pāna ki tēnei. Kaupapa, tino whaitake mō tātou te iwi Māori o tira mō tātou ngā tāngata katoa. Nō reira, kei te mihi. Kei te mihi ki a kōrua, ko hara mai nō ahi te reiria, Jerome, Dania, tēnei te mihi ki a kōrua hoki. O tira ki a koutou katoa, tēnā koutou. Good evening. I acknowledge Oh, hara mai, hara mai. I start off my kōrero through acknowledging uh, our Heavenly Father, acknowledging those who have passed on, in particular our Wenerei, Rex Harrison, who laid at Kariaka and Ruatoria in, in the Ngāti Poro territory. Um, and then I brought it back to us uh, who have joined here today. Um, Dr Makarena Dudley, who's joined us from Tamaki Makauro. Um, it's great to have you here. Uh, Makarena, and also our two guests from Australia, um, Jerome and Dania. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Dania. Um, but to everyone who has come from near and afar, welcome. We also have uh, Fano. I picked up from the airport at uh, 2.30 uh, from the uh, uh, bioengineering, uh, Auckland Bioengineering. Um, Institute there. Welcome, welcome back to Gisborne. Um, yeah, koutou katoa, a tēnā koutou. Uh, on that note, I'll start us off with a karakia, uh, kia ino i tātou. Hei mua koe i a mātou i hua, hei tohutohi a mātou mahi katoa. Ko koe anō hoki hei whakakaha i a mātou, kia whai kurori a ai koe i a mātou mahi katoa. Hei mea tīmata, hei mea mahi. Hei mea whakaoti i roto i a koe ki a whiwhi ai hoki mātau i te ora tonu i te mea e ata whaitia e koe. Kuroria ki to ingoa tapu. Amine. E tō mātau matua nui te rangi, ki a tapu tau ingoa, ki a tae mai tau rangatiratanga, ki a metea tau e pai ai ki runga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi. Ho mai ki a mātau ai a nei he taro mo mātau mo te nei rā, murua o mātau hara, me mātou hoki e muru nei i o te hunga e harana ki a mātou. Awa hoki mātou e kawea ki a whakawaea, e ngari i whakaorangi a mātou i te kino, nau hoki te rangatiratanga, te kaha, me te kuroria, ake, 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 a mine. I'll pass over to Samantha. Kia ora, Dave. Kia ora, Dave. Tēnā katoa katoa ko Samantha Holsworth te koingua, nō te kera kauhau. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it's wonderful to see our wonderful Tarapti community here, uh, as well as our guests and um, uh, from from Auckland. Um, I just want to say it's just a real pleasure to have Dr. Dudley with us today. We've been trying to get Dr. Dudley here for a couple of years now, and I think COVID was the reason we couldn't. And now we're here; it's wonderful. And Dr. Dudley is going to be here with us for the AMP show tomorrow as well as be our wonderful Auckland Bioengineering Institute um, colleagues and GE Healthcare. How about now? I don't think this is working. I'll speak up. Um, so I just want to mention that, um, so Dr Dudley's work is a really wonderful example of medical research that we at Mātai are just very excited about supporting and celebrating. Um, Dr Dudley is a real role model in clinical psychology who's contributed significantly to, Aotearoa New Zealand, to the Aotearoa New Zealand community around the detection, the understanding and the education in mati, whare, whare and dementia. Um, just a little more about uh, Dr Dudley's bio. 
So she teaches cultural competence and uh, coordinate cultural input in the doctoral program in the clinical psychology uh, program at University of Auckland. Uh, she teaches neuropsychology at, um, at the undergraduate level and she's interested in cognition and the ageing brain. And her current research is, is investigating mati farifari, that is dementia, in Māori, and she's leading a very large team of researchers and clinicians in the development of a Māori-friendly tool for detecting mati farifari. Uh, she's involved in the adap adaptation of the cognitive therapy program for Māori, and she's leading the ongoing project and the development of an app that provides information to whānau about um, mati farifari, and, and there's information right there uh, in the pamphlets. So um, I just want to really talk about more about, about Dr Dudley. You know, a lot of her work we feel, from our point of view, is really reflected in Mātai's name, actually. Mātai's name is, and Fakatoki is to Mātai Mātai Hura, which, is, which means the investigating, investigative revealing eye. And you know, the actual the story, the Tamata Matahura story, commemorates that the story based on um, this the Fakatoki and the logo, and the, that was gifted by Mark Kupua, who's one of our local cultural artists of Tarafti. And and the story that Mark Kupua gifted to us relates to a meeting a meeting between the Tohunga Tako Takitaki and Reverend Williams, who encouraged um, Taho encouraged Reverend Williams to look into the puna that is the pond, to, in which knowledge is reflecting back. And so when we understand what we're seeing, what's reflecting back at us, we can come to terms with it and, and enhance the depth of discovery, um, and then we can move forward. And that kind of, when I see the work that Dr Dudley's doing, that kind of really reminds me of the story that, that um, the wonderful Mark Kapoor gifted to us that's reflected in our name. So really excited to, to uh, welcome you, Dr. Dudley, and um, welcome also to G Healthcare. And I'm going to introduce Jerome and Danas separately uh, with their buyers uh, after Dr. Dudley's talk. Which so Jerome and Danas a uh, talk starts at 5:30. So welcome again. Thanks, Dr. Dudley. Kaitahokainga mō te iwi o Tairawhiti tēnā koutou. Ngā mihi mō tēnei honore uh, mātai mō te kāranga uh, ki a koriroa hau mō te kaupapa o mate wareware. Ki a koutou te honga ko haere, ko haere mai tēnā koutou. Uh, nō reira uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā hoki tātou katoa. So I hope you can hear me. Um, I've got a bit of a croaky voice. Um, thank you very much for that lovely invitation, uh, for that lovely introduction and for the invitation. To, and it's just wonderful to, to finally get down here to Tairawhiti. So, um, yes, I do a lot of uh, research around mate wariwari, and I do like to do research that um, makes a difference, if you like, or that is very translational or very apl applied and some, something that will make a difference out there in the community. And, um, and the reason why this is so is because um, over the years I have spoken to many kaumātua and they tell me what you know what they would like to to see happen in this particular area and i carry their stories with me and i feel like i have a responsibility and my team have a responsibility to deliver to deliver the request from them to uh, uh, to provide them with information to get out there to develop a tool that more valid, that uh, more accurately diagnoses uh, mate wariwari in Māori. And so um, it's, it's a, certainly a professional journey, but it's also a very personal journey. So, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. It's a bit of a mishmash, actually, because um, I'm involved in quite a few different projects. So we'll touch on a, a, a few of those projects this evening. So now I've lost my clicker, but we 
probably don't need it yet. Okay, so just to put this um, research in context, let's look at some numbers. Um, we've just put a few numbers up there. So our kaumatua, pākeke, are living longer now, which means that the number of those elderly who are 65 years uh, older increased by 41% between 2013 and 2018. That's a huge increase. And what this actually means is that there will be more kaumatua, pākeke, who are being diagnosed with mate ware ware. Um, a study out of the uh, memory clinic at Middlemore Hospital also shows or certainly suggests that <clears throat> Māori present with mate ware ware at around uh, about 8.5 years younger than New Zealand Pākehā. So, un uh, sort of like a lot of the uh, other statistics that um, um, that we see in uh, across the uh, you know the health sector, uh, the statistics for mate ware ware dementia are not great for Māori either. So, first of all, what is dementia? And a lot of people, a lot of Komata ask me, well, what is dementia and what is Alzheimer's? And they get confused. D so, just very quickly, uh, dementia is a term, it's like an umbrella term. Not unlike how we have the term cancer as an umbrella term, and there's all different types of cancer. Well, dementia is uh, the umbrella term for a number of different types of um, dementia or mati wari wari. And the most common one being Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's disease. Depending what, what uh, article you're reading, um, 70 to 80 percent of people uh, suffer from Alzheimer's disease. Vascular dementia is another one that's reasonably common and that is um, that's uh, an outcome of people who have strokes. Um, Lewy body dementia, is Lewy body are just a type of uh, protein that's found in the brain. Um, frontotemporal uh, dementia is another type of dementia and there's a lot of personality changes that take place at the beginning, at the early stages of frontotemporal dementia because it affects that part of the brain. And of course, as, um, as we all know, a lot of the presentations, in fact, are mixed dementias. And um, some of my old age psychiatrists that I know in, in Auckland who get out there and, and meet people say that, in fact, most of the people that they, that they work with or they, most of their patients indeed do have um, some mixed, a uh, form of mixed dementia. And there are other, many other different types of dementias as well, too many to go into tonight, but there's alcohol-related dementia and Parkinson's disease dementia. So not all Parkinson's disease, disease leads to dementia, but uh, it can do. So, <clears throat> so the current Parkey understanding of um, of the dementia state is that it, 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 it occurs as a result of the deterioration of brain cell function. And because of the slow process of this decline, um, the people or the persons or the whanau are living with the persons who are experiencing uh, this, this decline may not notice it so much at first. So um, increasingly, uh, we do recognise how that the brain is an important organ for our tinana, so it affects how our tinana, how our body uh, functions, as well as it also um, affects other uh, parts of our of ourselves, such as our our moods, our thinking, our behaviour, our feelings, emotions, and decision making capabilities. So um, our brains are, brains are made up with of millions and billions of uh, brain cells. Um, or nerve cells. Now these nerve cells talk to each other and they communicate, they, they could it all with each other and, uh, and they tell us how we, um, how to interact and how, respond, how to respond appropriately to the world around us. During matea ware ware, um, these cells lose the ability to communicate with each other and eventually they die. And you can see in this, um, in this shot here, in this slide here, the, the right hand side is uh, obviously has shrunk in, in, uh, considerably and you can see the language area and the memory area of the brain uh, has, has shrunk in considerably and that's where the early signs of, uh, or the early symptoms of uh, mate ware ware or dementia um, can be seen. So. In 1920, um, a, a list of risk factors were published um, that may lead, or the 12 uh, risk factors that 
uh, lead to uh, lead to mate wariwari or dementia. And so these are less education, hypertension, so heart problems, hearing impairment if it hasn't been uh, addressed. So if you are having hearing difficulties, make sure you get along and, and get some help. Um, smoking, obesity, depression, physical inactivity, diabetes, excessive alcohol consumption, and I think uh, traumatic brain injury, and air pollution was the 12th uh, risk factor that was, um, that was identified. What you might look notice if you look at the slide and at these uh, various risk factors is that they are all modifiable. So we can all make, make changes to our lives to decrease or to remove these uh, risk factors from our lives and therefore lower the risk of, of getting dementia. They do say that if you can um, decrease these risk factors, um, it can prevent the onset of dementia by up to 40%, which is a huge amount. So it's really worthwhile us knowing this kind of information. And this is the sort of information that the Komata wanted to know. Um, of course, they don't know this, this kind of information, but it's, you know, it's, um, you know, it's our obligation to uh, get this information out there so that people can do something about it to prevent the onset of the disease. And often the disease, when it does uh, manifest, when it is seen, it's actually started in the body maybe decades before in that person's lifetime. So the earlier you start leading a life devoid of these um, risk factors, the better the chances that you won't get dementia. So um, <clears throat> in a, a very um, well-known study that was uh, conducted here in uh, Aotearoa, the LILAC study, which was um, looking at the well-being, health and well-being of octogenarians in uh, a sample of um, New Zealand, the New Zealand population. What they did was they, um, they were applying the 3MS, which is the Modified Mini Mental State Exam, and that's just a, a screening tool to see if people might have um, mild cognitive impairment or dementia. And when they were testing the Māori cohort in, that's in that uh, particular study, on the score they were scoring they were scoring which uh, the score they were achieving indicated that they had dementia but of course on the follow up visit by the clinician the clinician indeed was finding that they didn't have dementia so the reason why i'm putting this uh, why I'm putting the slide up is because this is where I kind of come into it. And so my background is in neuropsychology and it's like testing uh, how well people, people's thinking abilities are usually after some kind of insult to the brain. And so um, what I've always been kind of harping on about for many years, in fact, was uh, developing or adapting tools that are appropriate for Māori that are valid uh, valid in terms of their findings or in terms of their diagnosis that are also meaningful uh, to Māori and um, are, yeah, relevant to Māori and are valid. And um, so this is a an example of the 3MS which is a very widely used screening tool um, uh, being uh, misdiagnosing our people. So I just kind of wanted to mention that because I'm going to see, uh, let you see what I've done in response to that, um, in, t in response to that study. So, um, so, uh, so what we did was we thought, okay, we, we're going to develop our own tool. Um, and we applied for funding. We got funding from the Health Research Council of New Zealand and, um, we had to have we had two aims for our project, so it was it was a large uh, grant uh, over three years. And first of all, we wanted to develop a Maori world view of dementia. Um, this is not the right um, version. It's a few mistakes on there, but anyway, you get the gist. Um, so we wanted to develop a Maori world view uh, from a, a Maori perspective to develop and also to develop a Maori friendly diagnostic tool to help detect mati wari wari. So, um, the, you know, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm a researcher who believes that research on Māori should be 
led by Māori. Um, so the, uh, the named investigators on all my research team are Māori, so the column on the left-hand side are all Māori. But of course we have our uh, non-Māori, our Pākehā colleagues who bring an enormous amount of expertise and specialisation to assist with this, and they do all this mahi for us in kind. So, um, so we've got a really great team. Um, and we, of course, have a Tumwaki Ropu, so a group of kaumātua to uh, guide us and to advise us right all along the way. So I never do, I, d I don't do anything really unless I've consulted with our kaumātua group as to what, if that's the right thing or not. And they soon let me know um, either way. So this is just a, a getting together. Um, at the end of the uh, third year. It's extended a little bit because of COVID. Uh, so we're actually now into our fifth year, but we are about to finish the study and I'll talk a wee bit about it shortly. So we went around the Mutu, we interviewed 232, actually up to 300 Komatua and their whanau around the Mutu um, in these uh, various areas. Kaitai, Auckland, Hamilton, Taranaki, Whakatane, Wellington and Christchurch. And we then got together and identified themes from the d data that were recurring and you know, kept popping up. So uh, I've just got a couple of photos up here. We started off in Kaitau, which is where I hail from. And I've just realised I forgot to do my peppy hub, but never mind. Um, so we started off in Kaitau and, um, and then we moved to, uh, actually we went to Kiriroa, uh, for, to Auckland from there and then Kiriroa. But I don't have photos of those actual uh, interviews of those hui. Uh, this this is in Taranaki and these are the, the lovely uh, queer from Taranaki singing Asawaiata about their beautiful maunga. Um, and we ended up, no we didn't, we went down to uh, Christchurch to one of the most beautiful marae I've ever seen. Um, and we had a huge turnout of people there. That wasn't even a, a quarter of the number of kaumatu who turned up that day. And we finished up in Whakatane. Uh, that was our last um, hui that we hold around the country. You can see a picture, of, you can see in that picture um, Oliver Menzies, who's a geriatrician at Auckland Hospital. Now he's Ngāti Kahungungu, and what we did at the end of every session was that we gave a, um, an information session back to the kaumata or the queer, because they wanted to know a lot of facts and figures about, about mate wari, about dementia, and so this is what we gave them, or this is what we provided. But what I really want to talk about today um, is a Māori view of mate wariwari, which came out of the study. Um, so some of the main findings, or just some of the findings, um, the first one is, not surprisingly, none of the kui o liked the word dementia and they didn't like the word Alzheimer's. And I don't, I think there's a lot of people who don't. They didn't want to use that word. It, it conjures up a lot of negative uh, associations. So I said, okay, well, what, what do you, you know, what kupu do you want to use? Well, it differed from rohi to rohi, from area to area, depending and depending on what word that was used. Eh? So, um, what? But what we found was the term that was most commonly used across most iwi was the term mate wari wari. and. This means, mate in this context means to be sick or unwell, and what it means to, it means forgotten. So that's the term that we've gone with. Um, that is not to say that if in your iwi, that is not the term you would prefer, that is not as to say that you have to use it, but that's just, as I said, that's the term that suited most iwi. Um, another uh, finding or another theme that came out uh, recurrently was, the Komat of the queer talking about uh, their wairua not being uh, not being asked about by the by the by the physician by the doctor uh, by the psychiatrist whoever, and this really disturbed many of them. Many of them spoke about this. This disturbed them because to them that was the most important part of their of their unwellness was their wairua was their spirituality. Um, it was the most important aspect of their health and well-being, so that was really interesting. Um, and another uh, theme that came through, which was really, it was really sad, 
and uh, you know, it horrifies me to this day, was the lack of information about mate wari wari that's out there. Now, for, for generally for the public in, in, in New Zealand, there's not a lot. New, the Alzheimer's New Zealand website is pretty good and most of their pages are on Te Reo Māori, so it's quite, they are good. But you know, for Māori who are out in uh, more um, remote areas, who don't have access to to the internet or whatever, uh, you know, they just don't have, they just don't get the information. Now, I had so many um, co-mata were sitting there in the audience, and I remember one queer quite distinctly. Uh, she she sat there and she said, "Well, I'm just waiting for my dementia to come," and. She thought, like a man, like many of them, was she thought it was just something that happened as you got older, and of course I had to really reassure them that no, actually most of you won't be getting mati wari wari. So this is the kind of misinformation that's out there because they don't, they're not being told anything else. They're not, they don't have access to the right information, and I find that really sad. And I think that's a, that's one of you know that's one story that I carry with me, and I that is one of the. Um, is one of the themes I think that motiv motivated me to do some research I'm going to talk about, or the app actually. Um, so many Māori we found did uh, understand mate wari wari as a debil de debilitating disease, um, and a, a lot of them, a lot of them uh, pictured it or placed it or contextualised it. Uh, in the ongoing intergenerational effects of colonisation, such as the loss of rongoa Māori medicine, uh, the introduction of Pākehā medicines, the loss of uh, the tohunga, the practice of tohunga, uh, changes in cultural practices and lack of access to traditional foods for many. And actually, if you look through those uh, those themes that came up, they do kind of match with some of the risk factors that that uh, can lead to mate wari wari. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of credence to credibility to these ideas that the komata were coming up with. That um, you know, people who are taking some of our komata are taking multiple uh, medication of an evening. It, 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 it can confuse them, they can get confused. And so that's why they were connecting it up with mate wari wari. Um, traditional kai, I think, um, was in the old days, as we know, um, in Te Ao Māori, was um, very healthy. And so, uh, unfortunately, a lot of us don't have a healthy diet um, in, in contemporary times. So these are not, you know, these are quite within, actually, what we perceive as being... Um, ways to uh, reduce um, mate wari wari. There was a lot of talk about Fano, and like pretty much any disease or any health condition that uh, Māori uh, face, uh, the Fano is central uh, to anybody living with mate wari wari. And that came out in, in many various ways, like often they would say they were only happy when they were with their kids, they were only happy when they were at home with their Fano. And so the, those kind of references to Fano came through all the time, and so it it it, it really so what what we know also is that um, a lot of our komatua like to be kept at like to stay at home when they're unwell, even in the more the the later stages or the middle stages or the later stages of mate wari wari, they uh, have a preference to staying at home and the whānau want them to stay at home. And this fits with our traditional way of caring for our sick. And this is all very well and I, I think it's a wonderful, I think it's wonderful. So I heard many stories about whānau who would pull resources, who would come together, who would share the load. And that was a common thread. In fact, I was talking to somebody today who, uh, who, whose whānau does the same thing. And that's all very well, but of course what we need is that we need to um, be able to financially support those whānau because a lot of our whānau are not going into age residential care, therefore the government is, um, is not providing the same amount or the equal amount of funding for Māori that they are for non-Māori who do uh, who do go into age residential care. So that's kind of something that the the uh, government is looking at uh, at the moment. Uh, so in the last budget, 
I mean, it's not a lot, it's a drop uh, in the bucket, but um, they did uh, dedicate $12 million to, uh, to dementia services. And I want to make sure that some of that funding goes towards whānau uh, who are keeping their, their kaumātua at home and looking after them. Because a lot of our whānau are already struggling financially. And then to take on this extra burden is just, you know, sometimes it's just uh, too much for the whānau. Um, not all whānau, or not all komata considered it to be a disease. Some komata, and I have to be honest, in the, with the people that, I, uh, that we interviewed, um, there weren't a lot, but there, there definitely are thoughts out there that mate wari wari um, is, is, is not perceived in a negative way, uh, but rather as a part of a spiritual journey. Um, and as a normal consequence of growing old. And, and at a stage where the komata was actually being prepared to join their tūpuna on the other side. And here's a lovely quote. I remember my aunties and uncles saying they were talking to the old people. They are with them. They are over on the other side. They are between two worlds. So don't worry about them. They are okay. And so I heard quite a few komata talk like this. And that was interesting. Uh, that was interesting from my perspective, who I guess I come from quite a Western um, background and uh, was really nice to. And what this prompted me to do was actually try and look at mate wari wari, not so much from a negative space. So, you know, when, you, when, when a person gets a diagnosis of mate wari wari, it doesn't mean the end. It doesn't mean uh, death. You know, there's a lot of living that these people can still do, and there is a lot of quality of life that, uh, you know, that that is part of that person's and that whānau's um, existence. So um, I think it's really, I think this is great to to sort of create a space where mate wari, wari is not the scary thing. It's just another illness that we deal with, and uh, we just get on with it. So... Um, I was going to present, well, I didn't get over to um, the Hammond Care Conference in the end because I, um, I was unwell, but um, what the organisers spoke to me, and they ahead of that, and they said to me, uh, so these people in Australia, they said they just love how Māori have created our own term for dementia, Alzheimer's, and we're creating our own spaces. That, that is, it's not all negative. There are some wonderful positive things in there. And, and one of the things, of course, is when um, rangatahi, when tamariki rangatahi, when mokapuna become involved with their kaumata, become involved in their journey. Um, so, you know, it's not all negative. And I, I really think I'd love to be able to move forward where we can create... Um, a journey that is, is, is less negative, if you like. Um, <coughs> and so we asked the Komata what they thought was uh, protective. And, you know, these all make sense. So I heard a, a number of times, I heard the stories of the Alquia, she would go on to the Marae, and when she was on the Marae, her mate wari wari, her dementia would disappear. She would just become normal. I, I heard that over and over again. So I think it's it's not about it is about being on the marae, but it it what it what what that includes uh, being on the marae. How does that help us up for a number? Number one, it's a very familiar environment. And as we know, people with mate wari wari, they function at their best in an environment that's familiar to them. Um, it, it's an environment where they feel safe, uh, secure, and it's an environment where they probably feel a lot of aroha. It's an environment that reminds them of when they were little growing up on the marae. So going, and, but not only that, they go onto the marae, <clears throat> you go onto the marae, you hear whaikuriroa, you hear waiata, you hear, you smell the, the smells coming out of the kitchen. You eat the kai. It's all these wonderful memories flow. Now, this might sound a little bit hocusy, pokusy, but it's not. Because actually what you're doing is you're scintillating those uh, neural, neuronal pathways that, and activating them so that that person is actually functioning to the optimum in that time period that they're on the marae. And, and once again, I would, and, you know, it sounds like... Oh, 
somebody just make this up, but it's, it's what I heard. When they left the marae, they would go back into their confused, disoriented state. So, um, you know, to me, I've always believed that Māori health, uh, Māori well-being lies, a lot of it lies within our identity, within our a positive Māori identity. And to me, this is evidence of it. Um, speaking to all Māori, of course, a lot of the kaumātua um, were reported as reverting back to their first language, which is te reo Māori, that was usually strapped out of them, or they were punished when they were five years of age, when they went to school and they weren't allowed, and then they got punished for speaking the reo. So they never spoke it again. But actually, those pathways have already been formed, uh, and they're, they're in the brain. And we know that in the brain of people who are bilingual, there's a lot of grey matter, a very dense grey matter, so we know there's a lot more activity in the brain of people who are bilingual as opposed to people who are monolingual. And so I would encourage anybody uh, to, you know, to encourage their kaumātua uh, to speak the reo, to, because what you're doing is you're activating those pathways again. Now often um, people will stop, or kaumātua, will stop speaking English. They might forget, because that's more of a recent memory as opposed to the real, which is a long-term memory, which are the parts of the brain which um, are usually intact still. Um, so you lose your new memories uh, in those pathways before you lose the long-term memories. Um, <clears throat> and as I said, all of these... Um, all of these points, Māori kai, rongo Māori, um, being involved in activities such as rāranga, poi, walking, singing, waiata, karakia, all of those are, uh, all you're doing is activating the brain. And one of the most important things about being on the marae, uh, and one of the risk factors, which, um, which confirms one of the risk factors, is that people are being socially interactive. And we know when you're being socially interactive, you are utilising your brain. If you're not being socially uh, interactive, then you're not using your brain so much. So in that sense, the brain is quite a bit like a, a muscle in that you either you, you use it or you lose it. So um, social interaction is really important and I would suggest that everybody does that irrespective of if you're Māori or go on to a marae or not. So join some kind of group and, um, and, and meet and interact with other people. Okay, so I do want to talk about um, this tool that we are developing, which is just about to be launched. Um, I've been saying that for a while now, and I feel a bit <laughs> awkward when I say it now, but it is actually right, and it's because of COVID we've been held up. So um, like all good screening, psychometric type of tools, we have uh, a, um, what do you call it? An acronym, sorry, an acronym. I say what what We have an acronym, and it's called the MANA tool, the Māori Assessment of Neuropsychological Abilities, and um, it's a screening tool for the detection of mate wari wari in Māori. It will be rolled out into the what was the DHBs uh, alongside the so the mini ace has been used at the moment uh, as a screening tool, and the MANA tool has been accepted by the Health of Older People as being the tool of choice when. Uh, screening for mate wari wari in Māori. So we're, we're really excited about this. You know, it's 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 a Māori friendly tool. Well, actually, it's it's not a Māori friendly tool. I've th rethought this. It's a, it's a mana enhancing tool. So not only do we think that it's more valid, but it actually provides a better experience for the whānau. So we're asking questions that are relevant to them. We're asking questions that do um, do help to detect mate wari wari, of course. But we are asking, so we've uh, included content that is meaningful to the person being assessed and to the whānau. So obviously we've included Māori content. And we've never had this in, in Aotearoa before. I've been administering uh, cognitive tests for 20 years now, and the number of Māori are sitting on the other side of the table from me looking at me like I'm something from another planet because I'm asking all these questions of them that don't mean anything, that are not relevant to them, and in fact are invalid in many cases. So it's also a very mana-enhancing tool. And 
what makes our tool uh, different from any other tool, I think, in, in the world is that we have included a wairua component, and this is um, sort of harking back to the reason why uh, I raised the, the bit about the kaumatua wanting their wairua sort of talked about or included in the assessment. So the wairua component is, is just that. We ask questions about uh, their wairua. It's not a part of the actual diagnosis, uh, so it's not scored. Um, there's a functional um, tool and there's a cognitive tool, as is in any other uh, assessment tool uh, that's used worldwide. And so um, this is kind of what it looks like, and we looked at the different things that we thought might be uh, mana enhancing, wairua enhancing for Komata, and we've asked them questions along those lines. And we've consulted widely with Komata right throughout the country, not just those in Auckland. So. When we got the first draft of the tool ready, we brought a whole lot of kaumatua up to, uh, up to Tāmaki Makoto and got them to have a look at it and run through it and uh, discuss it widely. And one, one uh, woman came to me and she said, well, my mum passed away of Mati Wari Wari. She said, but if I, she had had this to, if they had used this tool to assess her, she said, I would have been so happy. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, so that's the function, the wairua component. <coughs> the functional component is pretty much like uh, all the other uh, functional tools that, uh, that are widely used, not only in Aotearoa, but also around the world. And they cover all the domains that a, uh, a person who diagnoses would look for uh, in terms of whether or not that person is functioning okay in their everyday life. Um, so you might just see on there, I don't know how clear it is, but we've also kind of inserted a little bit of a lesson in te reo as well. And this is because a lot of the kaumatua said to us, well, it's really, you know, we hate hearing our language, our reo uh, pronounced badly. And so, and even though, you know, people try, we have quite a few um, recent um, people who have recently immigrated to this country in that particular era doing those kinds of assessments. So we thought, well, we'll just add in a little um, uh, a real class in there, if you like. And so where there is a Māori kūpu, we've put the phonetic uh, pronunciation afterwards so that they can have some attempt at pronouncing our kūpu uh, correctly. And that's like music to our ears, uh, to Māori. We love hearing our, our reos uh, pronounced properly. Um, and so the, the cognitive assessment was the, the big part. We've done quite a lot of work on it. Um, won't worry about that one so much, but like this one. So in most of the picture naming tasks, which is so naming objects like this, looking at pictures is one of the one of the uh, the abilities that is lost early earlyish in in Mate Wari Wari. So we've just pick, picked out pictures that you know that are familiar. Okay, just familiar and. What it does is, what we are seeing is people are looking at it and thinking, oh, this is about me, you know, this is about Māori. It's not about looking, identifying an elephant or a rhinoceros or whatever, which is what is usually depicted. It's about inclusiveness. It's about Ma making Māori feel included. And, um, and also we, we, we've played a lot around, uh, we've put a lot of attention to the scoring criteria because in past... Tests. So we've found that, for example, in one of the widely used tests in the world, people get asked, "What is? Uh, tell me what uh, domestic the word domestic means." Well, when a group of in one study, when a group of Māori men were asked this, they said, "Oh, that's a fight with the missus. Oh, that's an argument with the missus. That's that, that's what they said." Another. This is in the vocabulary subtest. Um, of the ways forward, so widely used tests around the world. Then they were asked, what does terminate mean? And they oh, well, that's to kill somebody, this kind of thing. So those guys were, um, and they were men, um, they were marked wrong. And so they didn't get scored right. But the reality is they're not wrong. In their world, they're right. So it's the manual that's wrong. It's the scoring criteria that's wrong. So we've... We've uh, put a lot of time and effort uh, into the scoring criteria so that everything that is right is indeed acknowledged as being right. So it's in these kind of subtle ways that, that there is bias in these types of tests. 
So we, we know that education is a major factor in any kind of uh, psychometric testing. So we wanted to try and eliminate that. There's not a lot you can do in a very uh, relatively short test. So in this uh, particular test, we asked uh, the person to spell the word kai. Um, if they can't spell it, then there's a bit of an assumption going on. What we all say is we'll move on to another test because we think then it's po possible, and this is what was overlooked in the lilac study, is that they di didn't consider uh, the, the education that those kaumātua didn't get. So some kaumātua never went to school. Some kaumātua may as well not have gone to school, uh, given their experience with school back in those days. So we are assuming if you can't spell the word kai, then maybe you don't have, you know, you haven't learnt to spell. So what we do then was we kind of abort that task and we move on to a, the next task, 12B, which is about repeating numbers, which is less uh, education, uh, which is less dependent on a person's formal education. So we're attempting to address the, those issues that, um, that do impact, impact um, performance and um, uh, those issues that, that uh, make the tool culturally biased. Um, and there's also a whole lot of um, questions that the, um, that the, or the old age psychiatrist or the clinician can ask about um, the history. And everything, of course, is in thrill. Um, so we're going to be, we'll just go back, we're going to be launching the, mate, uh, the mana tool very soon. And it will be, there will be um, a video w that will accompany it so that non-Māori clinicians, who are most people who diagnose mate wari, wari in this country, can follow a, a, a video where the client wants to speak real. Okay, so there will be, uh, in that video, there will be a, a Pākehā clinician, uh, a, a person in, in the room as well who's interpreting what's been said, and the, the client who was speaking in the real. So that will be available as well. And of course, all written court forms are available in both both languages. So I don't know how I'm going for time, but um, and now we'll just move on to um, the app. So once again, going back to those three major findings, the Komata were crying out for information. Um, yeah, I carry those, I can, it kind of haunts me a little bit when I hear those stories because I was so affected by it. So, you know, we just said, we've got to do something about it. So we got a little bit of funding. We developed uh, this Mate Wari Wari app on a shoestring, um, but it was launched last year. And since then we have, or just recently actually, we've put it out there and we have piloted it with five Fano, three, uh, uh, three generations with, uh, within five different whānau got their feedback and we've applied for more funding. We've got quite a lot more funding now, so we're now, so this is a work in progress, so now we're going to build on that feedback. We're going to make the tool, we're going to make the app better than what it is. We're going to make it more sophisticated, so we've gone to a commercial company, well, actually the part of Waiparata Trust, the whānau tahi they're called, and they do all that kind of digital work. Um, and so they're going to make it really uh, just much more uh, user friendly. Uh, we're going to be focusing on rangatahi so that they can be showing their nanny or their koro to how to use the app, how to access it. Um, we're going to have a lot more for caretakers in there and we're going to have a lot more of rongoa uh, Māori in there as well. So um, that's kind of what it looks like up here. That's when you can see the purple but there's these cards over there that's what it looks like on your phone i've got it on my phone so um we decided what when we were planning it we thought of course we've got to have karakia it's got to open with karakia so our komato at the time who's passed away sadly um he recorded this co this karakia and i'll play it it's only a minute long i shouldn't say only but it's a minute long so just um i think we'll play it Tohokai, 
ki wene o mato e pāngi ana ki te nō ngā māwiwi ara te mate wale wale. Ka piki tō rātou kaha, ka piki tō rātou ora, ka piki tō rātou māramatanga ki tāu i hiehia ai. Tūturu whakamaua ke a tina, tina, haumie, huie, taiki. So each time a person accesses the app, they can bypass that bit of, it's something that we, we knew that we had to have there. Um, the app is full of pages of information on what is mate wari wari as this one depicts. Um, we have taken away a lot of the medical jargon uh, and tried to make it as uh, user-friendly um, as possible, but we've got since got feedback, feedback that it can be made even more user friendly. So we will be working on that. So we've got uh, people. So Dame uh, Nada Glavish, who is introducing the the app. So we've got short videos throughout. Um, we've got this is a. Uh, um, Oliver Menzies, who is talking about definition of mate wari wari, what happens when mate wari wari is diagnosed. Um, we've got a, a short video of Bobby Nepia, who is works at the Memory Clinic in Middlemore, and she's a social worker. She goes out and works with a lot of Fano, and she's talking about um, advanced care planning, uh, enduring power of attorney, all those kind of things. And uh, then we have Dr. Wayora Port, who was just who was our who is our queer and is uh, sort of afidal our rangaho all the way through, and we have a um, an interview with a whānau living with Mate Wariwari. Sadly, this um, uh, well, she's just gone into uh, into a age residential care. The mum here, and um, this the, so there's lots of links in the in the in the app as well. There are links to um, Alzheimer's New Zealand. There are links to. Um, advanced care planning. I'm not sure about a EPOA, but anyway, there's a link here. Uh, so this is a this a program, the Attitude program, aired on uh, TV One a couple of years ago now, and it tells the journey of this. It's a lovely story um, of this whānau going through that um, mate wari wari journey. So that's there as well. Um, you know, there's a page on all the types, and so you just go like click on each one. I don't think the layout is all that clear at the moment. I'm not very happy with it, so that's something that we're working on. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, there's stuff about four caregivers there, but there could be a lot m more. And there is stuff, uh, there is also information there for our rangatahi um, and that we want to gamify so that we're going to really engage them. And also we want to put memory games on there that the komatua can use to exercise their brain. In fact, we should all be doing it. I do it all the time. Um, all those types of memory games, any brain games you can, you can um, get hold of, do them um, and, and keep your nerve cells working. Um, and then of course, um, there's a page there on information and support. So, I'm not sure what the time is. Oh, that's pretty good timing. So anyway, before I finish up, I do want to talk about cognitive stimulation therapy, Māori. It sounds very um, Pākehā, but because it is a, it is, it's a program that was developed in the UK, but it has been shown to be effective in slowing down the progress of people with mild to moderate Mate wari wari. And it's been uh, adapted to many, many different indigenous populations around the world. And they've all worked, it all works. So we thought, okay, we need to do this. So a group of us um, have got together and we have adapted the cognitive stimulation therapy for Māori. Um, and so really, the, so what we've changed mainly are the, the 18 principles. We've kind of made them more principles that relate more to a Māori world, although they are similar. When we adapted it, we didn't want to stray too much from the original because that had been validated. So we needed it to be, to know that it was still an effective program. We didn't want to change too much. The activity, so what happens is that Komata will come together over uh, 15 sessions and in each session is it has a different theme and they get it's very activity based but it helps people draw or helps Komata draw on 
Um, it, so it's a, the basis, the theory behind it is based on reminiscence theory. Uh, so uh, so what we ask Komata is to, to do is to think about, we, we kind of provide aids and games and activities that prompt their memory from when they were young or back in the day. And then we try and get them to connect those kind of connections with contemporary times. So, uh, so we're, we're getting them to sort of create new memories, in fact, that's what we're doing. And so there is a prescription, there is a prescribed way, even though it's, you know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the basis or the underpinnings is, is about having fun. Um, a lot of the criteria of CST is having fun. It also needs to be effective. So, um, so we've got some, so for, I'll just give you one example. And there's a lot of flexibility in it. So one of the sessions is about food. And so the facilitators can bring along pictures of food, pictures of food that we used to eat, pictures of food that we eat now, you know, groceries that we might buy now. But people can also bring along, actually bring along food and talk about it. And, and the facilitators create a discussion around that, around that kai. Um, so, um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's very activity based. We uh, we are saying that the so there are two facilitators for CST Māori. The main facilitator must speak the reo, because you're working with Komatua and they will want to speak the reo. Many of them will, but by doing so, what you're doing is triggering those old those old that sort of second pathway that cognitive reserve, if you like, that they have in terms of that first language that they acquired. So the first facilitator should uh, be able to speak the reo, and the second facilitator, not so so important, but should have a sprinkling of the reo. Uh, and so we're about to launch that as well. That's been quite a long process, and we piloted it down in Fakatani, and uh, that went, was really, we, we applied some pre and post measures and that came across very successfully so uh, it showed a, you know that it was effective as well now um, I would like to bring that program to uh, to Tairafati next year so we uh, Alzheimer's New Zealand have funded um, us to take the program to five areas around the Mutu um, and one of the areas I'd like to bring it to is to Tairafati and um, and what, what we will do is we'll train people to become facilitators in the CST program and then they can go away and, and, and run the programs in their own uh, NGOs or whatever, or their own um, hapu or, or marae or whatever. So that's just something I'd like to, and if anybody is interested uh, in being a, um, learning to be a trainer, then you can contact us on those email addresses. So, um, yeah, ko mutu uh, tēnei korirua, uh, nō reira tēnā koutou. Nā mihi, Dr Dudley. Just want to thank Dr Dudley for her really, your really enlightening talk on Mati Whare Whare. Um, the stories of yours and other people's journeys um, really, have, really help us with the understanding and help to demystify um, mate whare whare and also um, make it by making that information more accessible. So yeah, I just, for me, it was just nice to hear these of how you're talking with people with your kamatua, and that holistic, inclusive approach can drive our research. This is a great lesson for us at Matai. Um, it can drive our research and discoveries and our understanding that can help directly feed back into 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 our community. So it's a wonderful example. And so thank you um, for for coming, Dr. Dali. welcome. And um, I just want to mention that. Um, uh, I was actually thinking we might just want to have a quick five minute break and, and where we can um, just have a little break and I also wanted to mention that there was a little bit of a miscommunication um, from us um, we, Dr Dudley was we thought was going to be speaking tomorrow night and we, we, we was actually um, Dr Dudley is only going to be here for the AMP show tomorrow during the day tomorrow so if anyone knows of anyone thinking they're coming to the Elgin Turanga Health uh, hui can you please let them know that it's Dr Dudley, unfortunately, it was our fault. <laughs> um, she's not going to be able to be there. Um, but please come along to our Matai tent because Dr Dudley will be there all day. Yes. Um, so please definitely come and, come and, come and chat um, in person with Dr Dudley tomorrow 
at the Maasai tent, rain or shine. <laughs> so, um, but before, is there any questions? Um, any questions for Dr. Ali? Pressing questions. Oh, I just found it a little bit difficult. My husband's Maori. Yes. He's 74, so I yes. don't know whether you ask him as an old Kaumata oh. or anything like that. Yeah. But he's not been brought up. Um, yeah. In, in the Maori world. Like yeah. yeah that's, that's okay. This is. Well, it might be, you know, it might, it might not. It's not for everybody, and there are a lot of people like that, right. you know. But who knows? It might trigger trigger some memories. He may have spoken. Did he ever speak that no. when, he, when he was the wee? No. no. Well, I didn't either, and I'm kind of around that age area bracket. But um, so it may not be for him. No. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he but won't, he won't mix with. You know, you sound like it'd be neat if I could just get him to go places. He won't mix with anybody. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. Maybe it's not for him, yeah, but... I just thought yeah, 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 no, but, yeah. Thanks. I've got a question around the brain games. Yes. Do oh, yes. You, is there anything you recommend it for, for those who are wanting to do something at home? That you, do you have any favourite brain games? Well, look, you know, and crosswords. Um, you know the games, any memory games, the game where you um, have a pack of, pack of cards and you find the pairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're, they're great. They're easy. Anybody can do it. Getting your, the, you know, getting the person who you're with um, to read a, a small passage in a, in, a, in a newspaper and then getting them to relay that, talk to you, tell them about that, that particular item in their words, in their own words. That's another way of them holding, storing memories, storing information, uh, rearranging it so you know that they're really attended to it. They've put it into some kind of storage in their memory in their memory bank and they are relaying it back to you. That's another good easy one you can do across the breakfast table with your, with, a, with a newspaper sort of thing. But like any any games that are that are easily accessible, especially on um, on our phones these days, definitely encourage your you know everybody to do them really. Yeah. Kia ora. Well, well, women um, do present more with mati wariwari, but that's probably because there are more women living longer. I think that's probably. I, I don't know proportionately. I don't know. Do you know? No. Um, the trouble is with like in New Zealand, we haven't had a prevalence study. So we don't really know. A lot of what we know is we, it's kind of been, um, it's based on data that's been conducted overseas on other Indigenous people. Having said that, we were fortunate, once again, a team of us have been fortunate enough to be uh, granted quite a substantial amount of funding to conduct a Matewarewari prevalence study in Aotearoa on Māori. So we've actually started, we're doing all the you know admin stuff, and we will be hitting the road early next year and once again, we might come to Tairafati to to conduct a prevalent study. That will be the first, uh, to my knowledge, um, indigenous uh, mate wari wari, uh, uh prevalent study in the world. And of course, you know, uh, I feel a bit slightly uncomfortable with Australian visitors here, but <laughs> Ma <laughs> Māori lead the way on many different aspects of research in Māori health. We know that. And so um, this is another area which we kind of like trial base, blazing a little bit, yeah. Um, I just have a question on the age thing. You said it was offered the parents. Yeah. Um, so anything younger, because our phenomenon is just become 60. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like is... I was just talking, that, that particular study no, was on, on on 80-year-olds and older. But yes, like uh, we suspect, just anecdotally, we know that, and that little bit of um, information that's come out of Middlemore, that uh, we may be younger um, when, when we get our mate wari wari, uh, sadly. Uh, but um, we will see. Um, really, the, the, the prevalence study we are doing is uh, we're capturing 65 years of age and older, but really I think we should be looking at 55 years of age and older. But of course, then you get so many more people that to get that kind of funding in New Zealand just do, it doesn't exist. So we're just going to do the best that we can, 
and it's you know um, I had a, a friend uh, she's a senior OT in Rotorua and she said to me she goes to Turangi a lot she said I swear she said every second kaumātua there has got mati wari wari and she, and, I, and she said oh but they're not they haven't been diagnosed but I said well why and she said because they won't go to the hospital they don't they're too whakama. Yeah. The services are not accommodating our queer and kai mud. They'd rather just not know about it and just carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. There was, oh, there was one here first. Oh. Um, you are, I'm Cheryl Morley. I work with um, Alzheimer's Gisborne. Oh, yeah. I've been in my role eight years and I have been to many assessments or whānau where their loved one is going to be put through a mocker or the mini ACE, yeah. and thank goodness your, your new assessment tool is coming out. I've okay. seen those people destroyed with, mm -hmm. because they, they're, they're irrelevant, particularly for males using those animals. Some of the questions asked, they, they're not taking in, you know, in consideration of when a couple have been together for a long time, often the wife does speak for the man, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's just soul destroying to see it what is. it's what it is doing, and it's set up to fail. Yeah, yeah, these people walk away totally yeah. shattered. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that is a great huge tool for, and gives my heart joy to see that. Oh, see thank you. Thank you. And we've, you know, words got around that it is coming. We, I get inundated with emails from people all over, from every, every like all sort of sectors of society, wanting to know when it's going to be ready. So we've really got our skates on now and um, trying to get it out ASAP. Thank you. I just have one more. And yeah, anyone sure. else, um, please come along to the tent tomorrow. Um, got one here. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. I have an issue with one of my sisters being angry. Mm. The anger stuff that's coming through is kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So um, would this help her? Well, this is one of the areas I want to address. I don't think we've got enough information there for pe for caregivers, because people with mati wari who who uh, exhibit anger, sometimes it's frustration, sometimes it's fear, but their ability to demonstrate or exhibit that fear or frustration, anxiety, they no longer have. Those pathways have disappeared in their brain. So they it may manifest as anger, but that's not actually what they're feeling. It's not always the case, but it's sometimes the case. So caregivers need to know this sort of information and sadly it's lacking in that sort of, but that's something I definitely want to address. And because, there was a statistic ca that came out that said that more caregivers die than people with mati wari wari. Oh my my mum didn't get mati wari wari. <laughs> no. oh, well, thank you, Namahi, Dr. Dudley. Um, so, thank you again. Have a very short break just while we set up our next speakers, so please um, get the breath of fresh air and mingle a bit.